Hello and welcome to what will be the first review of the Green Giant Tactical YouTube channel. Uh, today we're looking at this, which is the GNG Firehawk. Uh, it's a comp uh, combat machine build, which means it's cheap, uh, it's predominantly polymer build and targeted at entry level users. Uh, this does not mean to say that it performs like most entry level guns around this price range. This is actually costing 130 quid, or well, 1p underneath uh, from Land Warrior. Uh, what you get with that is the gun itself, which I'll just put down for the moment, a 330 round polymer high cap mag, so got the clicking wheel on the underneath. Bag of 1000 GNG BBs. Normally, when you get free BBs, you may as well just chuck them, but in the case of GNG, uh, these are not actually that bad. So, I've kept them. I've had this gun for a couple of months now. So, um, Guns catalogue, if you really need that, because all their guns are on the website anyway, which is uh, guai2.com. Uh, G U A Y 2.com. Um, a little prize draw uh, token, scratch off the panel, has a code underneath, gives you the chance to win a gun through your retailer, and the retailer also wins the gun as well, which is cool for them anyway. Um, and an instruction manual as well as a cleaning rod, which I've not got pictured because all it is is a rod. So, not particularly interesting. Um, so, back to the gun itself. You have, well, based around an M4, uh, very short rail, uh, say about three, three and a half inches long. Flip-up sights, I'll just note that these are not the flip-up sights that come with it, um, because I had issues with them through personal preference these are added after so you can ignore these for a moment you have a metal duck bill flash hider uh, and this is really solidly built uh, this actually acts as an amplifier so when the bb passes through it makes it a lot louder than it would be normally for an aeg um, which for its main purpose where the gun is clearly made for a cqb environment uh, it should make a loud crack echoing off the walls and giving a fright uh, concept. Um, for the actual internals, you've got a stock sort of G and G top tech gearbox. Which, if I can get this to focus on the camera, see the label in there. There's top tech on it. Normally, in the when well, the past last couple of years, a combat machine would have its own separate gearbox, which would be of lower entry level quality. Uh, this now, well, this seems to be now across all the combat machines, I've done is taking older non-blowback versions of the GNG Top Tech gearbox and plug them in the cheap guns to go through stock. What that means for them is they're getting rid of a lot of stock. But it means for us we're getting much, much better gearboxes. Um, other than that, got a Polymer Magpul style um, stock. Uh, it's loosely based around a sort of MOE CDR stock style thing. Um, I quite like this because it has certain other stuff which I'll go into later. So that's on a. Uh, it's supposed to be six position, but in reality you're getting four absolute maximum. So that locks into place. So that's nice and solid. Doesn't wobble too much. It's going to wobble a bit because it's a plastic gun, it's not as accurate. Um, but on the whole, GNG is much better. So, get that down. You've got a nice solid metal sling, uh, sling point, and that is on both sides of the gun. Um, whereas before, again, GNGs would normally be focused on a right hander, whereas as you can probably tell, I am not. Um, so, You've got on the other side of the gun, you have the, uh, 
the bolt cover. Sorry. <laughs> I'll cut this bit out. <laughs> so on this side of the gun you have the bolt cover, which serves no real purpose in this other than to get, stop dirt from entering the gun. That pull the charging handle back. That reveals a the gearbox and I'll try and get some the camera and the hop adjustment. So to increase the hop, you push it that way, so towards the front of the gun. And if you want to reduce the hop, uh, you pull it towards the rear of the gun. And the hop unit in this is truly excellent, despite the fact that this is the barrel in this is quite literally from about there to there, uh, this will outrange a lot of stuff purely on the hop on its own, um, which taking into account the price is slightly ridiculous, but we'll leave that on the wayside for the now. Um, so let's go and, well, I can't do any actual shooting here because that stuff I'm going to have to leave for the range, but I need to organise that first. This is just an overview. Um, right, so to get the stock off, well, first off, you're going to have to put a battery in it because it is an AG. Um, so to do that, push that down, get it to the end of the stock, and you have, let's focus, put some light on it, you have a slidey pin either side, which is what the um, leather pivots around. Slide that down on its spring, if I can get it to do it, and then pull away. And that reveals the stock tube with the battery cable inside. Uh, now, as of stock, this would come with a Tamiya connect uh, mini Tamiya connector, but out of preference, I've got a Dean's connector on it because, frankly, the smaller it's easier to get into the stock. And you only have the choice of lipos on this because the battery can only go in the stock. You could, in theory, rewire it and have it externally. Well, you, sorry, you could have it externally wired, but why? Lipos are cheap, easy to run, and they generally last longer than nickel metal hydrides. Um, yes, you have to charge them differently. You have to pay more for the charger, but well, take size comparison, for instance. Um, no, I don't have any nickel metal hydrides left. Um, so. On that cable, you have a blade fuse. Again, this is them going into the future, realizing that most people can't get hold of the glass fuses that they'd normally put on the AEGs with the older generations, and have gone for an easy car blade fuse, which is conveniently wrapped up with plastic wrapping, which you can just about see. Um, but you can move that aside, and I have done, uh, for posterity purposes. Um, I haven't actually needed to change the fuse because this thing just runs and runs and runs. Um, so, right, I'll just get a battery. I can show you how relatively easy it is to get a battery in the stock. Right, so first off, I have here is a Vapex 7.4 LiPo with 1300 milliamp hour. This is about as big as you're going to get in the stock. Uh, WE are working on batteries uh, for the stock tubes, um, but they hasn't, as well, last check, they haven't actually been released yet. Um, but in theory, hopefully, they'll get a bigger uh, milliamp hour battery in the same sort of size. But for now, you're stuck with these. These are only about uh, 12, 13 quid, so it's not of great worry. Um, but, okay, so we're going to try, so first off, just bring it up in camera, take the male connector, the one with the pins on the outside, onto the female connector of the battery itself, push it on. Once it's going on nice and easily. Okay, now, what I'm doing, if I can get this thing to position, okay, I'll pin this over here, is I'm making sure the fuse is in line with the centre of the stock tube, because it, as you see it's got the gaps on the side, and that makes for a pain in the butt. So first off, slide that battery in, right down, and 
a bit further and a bit further and line that fuse up in the middle. Doesn't look, it's still sticking out quite a lot, but we'll see why in a minute that that doesn't really matter. Okay, so slide the stock back on, get it into position ready to go. Pull those pins I mentioned earlier back down and then that will lock onto the stock. So that's now onto the stock. Push that all the way down and there you go. The action of closing the stock down has actually forced the battery further into the tube, hiding the cables that were sticking out earlier. So there we go, got full movement of motion on the stock. So for now I'm going to lock it down to my normal setting which is about one notch back, despite the obvious length issues here. Um, right, so, so this is, uh, okay, first off, select semi. It's nice loud crack, <coughs> emphasising on how loud this thing is because I haven't actually got the, obviously nothing in the magwell, I won't be shooting anything in the magwell, um, but, so, nice loud crack, snappy response, brilliant little gun. Um, okay, selecting auto, <coughs> fire of rate, uh, it's a decent rate of fire even. <coughs> Um, impressively so, considering it's, well, used to get slow gearbox rates on these, so um, it was a pleasant surprise when I pulled this out of the box originally. Um, so now I'm going to slide it back and safe. Um, right, for mags themselves, I don't use the high cap, I'll just put that out right now. I have mid caps lying around, but I'm not even going to bother covering those because they are crap. Um, if you're looking to mid-caps, don't get G&G &G GR16s. They need to work on them drastically because they're a nice idea, but they don't work. So, put the high cap in. Normally this would have BBs in, and you'd hear their sort of whoosh as the BBs go into the thing. That's if you had the mag wound up. So you'd wind it up until you hear the distinctive difference in it so it will click, but I haven't got BBs in, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so it looks solid, kind of acts like a uh, foregrip, which is convenient seeing as there is no rail space at the front, so there is little point having a foregrip on this. This is purely for aesthetic purposes. You can have one if you want, but finding and doing it myself, you have to have the foregrip there, because otherwise you don't have enough length of pull. Um, so yeah, up to you if you want it, but I'd not recommend it, it just doesn't work. Um, other than that, good solid little gun. If you're a tall guy like me, you may have some issues with this. It's to the point where I can extend that to the full stock and it's light enough that I can actually hold it with my one arm and comfortably play just using one arm, leaving me this arm free to do whatever the hell I like. Don't take anything from that. Um, yeah, in, in general, this is a really pointy gun. I play and use this predominantly in woodlands, uh, where I use it as a sidearm for a much, much bigger gun with a higher FPS, which only allows me, well, which requires me to have a sidearm with me. Um, this is perfect for that role, because I can keep it out of the way on a sling behind my back and not have to worry about it. So, what's good about the gun? Um, Good strong motor, good gearbox, cheap, incredibly so. I, I honestly don't know why people don't just go immediately. Well, it's now on the forums and so on, you will see more people going, what ambestus gun? Anything based off this gearbox, simple as. If you're wanting anything cheap as a beginner, get a combat machine. Ignore everything else, fine, uh, they have combat machines so you don't want an M4. They have AKs, MP5s. You do not have to get an M4. Most people do because they're a nice simple platform to work on. Um, excuse me. Um, and yeah, it's a nice gun. Um, other than that, I've been GGT and this is the end of the review.